My name is Matthew Parker, and I'm a fourth-generation farmer at Terrace Ridge Farm in Carthage, North Carolina, where we raise farm-to-freezer beef and Bermuda grass hay for horses and cows. I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about pests of Bermuda grass, and specifically the Bermuda grass stem maggot. Compared to the fall armyworm, the stem maggot is less well-known, but it can still be a damaging pest. At Terrace Ridge Farm, we do farm consulting services, so if you have questions about your pastures or hayfields, feel free to give us a call at 910-639-8115 or visit our website at www.terraceridgefarm.com. So we're in a Bermuda grass hay field looking for signs of Bermuda grass stem maggot damage. A lot of attention is paid to the fall armyworm as being a pest of Bermuda grass, and it is, but the Bermuda grass stem maggot is also a pest too. And we found a couple of signs here of some damage. This hay field isn't infested badly, um, but there are a couple of signs here to show uh, so that you can know what to watch out for. The stem maggot, uh, it's called a maggot, but that's only one part of its life cycle. As an adult, it's a fly, and it will lay eggs on the Bermuda grass plant, and the, the eggs will hatch, and those maggots will uh, feed inside the stem of the Bermuda grass plant and they'll cause a single leaf to turn brown and die at the end of the Bermuda, Bermuda grass stem. What that does is that it uh, stunts the growth of that stem so that it'll never get longer or taller and if, if your whole field is infested like that then it could stop stop the growth of the Bermuda grass field at whatever height it gets infested at. So if your Bermuda grass is only this tall and it all gets uniformly infested it's not going to get it much taller than that and you may not know why because there will only be one leaf on each plant that is brown. So I found one here. Let's see where it was. That's it. This has one dead leaf at the very end of the stem. And you can always check that by grabbing onto it here, firmly. and pulling out gently, and that will sheath perfectly out wow. of the stem. Now sometimes you can actually find the maggot inside here. It could also be inside this part of the stem as well. Usually you're not gonna find the maggot. Maybe it's already fed and is gone. There are times when I found the maggot you can see that most of these stems here are fine. There's a little bit of damage. This is a good example here. There's a little bit of damage on this leaf that looks like possibly a uh, grasshopper. There's also maybe some window painting right here that's indicative of the fall armyworm. If it is an armyworm, it's very, very young armyworm. It's a lot different than the stem maggot, though. Yeah, that's very different. And there's also a few leaves out here that have brown tips. Um, that's, I believe that's because we went for about three weeks uh, after we cut this hay and didn't really have any rain. So there's a little bit of browning on the tips. That's not stem maggot damage. Uh, stem maggot, this, this is some browning right here. That's not stem maggot damage. The stem maggot, here's one, is gonna have one leaf right at the very end of the stem and it sheaths out perfectly. The other ones, if they're brown, it's not at the end of the stem and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, sheath out, it just breaks off. Of course, this field looks good when you look at it from a distance and it is a good field. And so there's some damage out here. It's not terrible. I'm gonna continue to keep an eye on it. And, and monitor that because any, any damage we have to it does impact the yield and the quality of the grass. So we, even though it looks good, um, we want to maintain it as good as we can and have the, as good a quality of hay as we can when we're ready to harvest.